it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. I must apologise from the start. I have got a sore throat, so I will be having to sip my lovely tea from my lovely sparkly um, thermos as I go through. So bear with me. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. Fruit tea. Really nice, strong fruit tea. Love it. Melts the throat very nicely. Today I have got this enormous box for you. Uh, it uses the Painted Seasons stamp set and paper. This is a bundle that was part of the second release celebration. Uh, so it's been around since middle of February. I'm just trying to find my second release brochure and of course it's gone walkabout. I'll find my first release but not my second release. Never mind. Anyway, um, it is now, this is now going to be, uh, it, go back, it is a level two item, uh, but you can now get the paper on its own as a level one item. So if you got the paper and the stamp set, oh, I've just found it, if you got the paper and the stamp set uh, in February and you love the paper and would like some more, you can now buy it as, well buy it, you can now earn it, get it for free as a level one item. So here it is as a level two and you can now get the paper on its own as a level one. So you can get more. So um, we've also got some annual, annual catalogue product as part of the third release celebration. I can't remember all of them, but they will be listed on my website. There will be um, current uh, up to current offers are on my website and there'll be the information there. I know it's the Share What You Love embellishment kit, uh, the Rich Razzleberry Velvet Ribbon, you get two reels of that. Um, the Pearl Doilies, you get two of two packs of those. Petal Promenade paper, the detailed, the laser detailed paper from the annual. Uh, can't remember what else. No, can't remember. But lots, lots, lots. Anyway, um, so let's have a look at how to make this. I've used the stamps and the paper, and I've also used from the coordination, um, the celebration coordination, the, uh, I think it's called the Storyteller Punch. Anyway, the, this lovely punch. And I have also used um, the stamp set more than words which again is one of the coordination items so you can add these to your order to help you get to the 45 pounds um, so very worthwhile bearing in mind so scoreboard and you need a piece of your designer series paper that is let me just make sure we're in camera we are that is 11 and a half by 12 um, you can cut it shorter, which would just make your bag shorter, but uh, you do need to leave lose the half inch off one side. And then all you do, she says, trying to find her measurements, is, right, with the short side at the top, the 11 and a half inches at the top, you score at two and three quarters, five and a half, eight and a quarter, and 11 inches and then if it's directional you'll make sure that this is the top when you then turn it so that you've got your 12 inches at the top and then just score at two and three quarters so if it's directional paper which obviously this isn't it's just an all-over pattern you would have the top there and the bottom there um, so if you were to use the um, toadstool paper for example you want to make sure that you've got the the top here so that's all we need for the scoring board for now uh, because this is a large piece of paper do be careful when you s fold your score lines to make sure that uh, you get them straight now I know that sounds odd because you've got straight score lines but you can go slightly wibbly so do make sure you've lined up on one side before you uh, burnish your score lines um, because otherwise your box will be a little bit Eep. ask me how I know um, right so 
on that subject. Um, let's line up. So line up and then burnish so that you are confident that that is flat. And again, line up. And the reason I say this is because the score lines, whilst they are straight, are not teeny. Uh, there is a bit of a, there's probably about a sixteenth of an inch um, in the score line. So um, you do need to make sure that that is, that is straight. So do just bear that in mind. It's more of an issue with these larger projects than it is with the smaller projects. Because um, obviously with the smaller projects you're not going to get such a difference between the top and the bottom. I hope that makes sense. Now, are we going to be able to see the score lines? Probably better on this side. Um, hmm, maybe not. Um, okay, let's grab a pen. So, we've got this half inch and we've got a score line here. And what we're going to do is wedge. So we're going to wedge there and get rid of all of that. And that's the only thing we're going to cut away. So, uh, no, it's going to be easier for me to see it from this side. It's quite a busy pattern on the other side. So just cut straight up and then wedge out there. And the only other thing you might want to wedge is just very slightly at the top so that there is no question that that's going to stick out. Then all you do is cut up each of these score lines. Um, which, as I say, are not the easiest thing to see on this particular pattern of paper. They were easier on the other one. Uh, it's always to do with the lighting and the pattern, and it's just, yeah, everything really comes together to make it either easy or difficult. Last one. Now, I wouldn't bother wedging for this particular bag. It's, uh, it's paper, not... Um, not card, and card is the one that's more temperamental and needs more wedging. So there are your four flaps. Then all you need to do is grab some tear and tape and pop that down the score line all the way down that flap. And then I tend to get my bone folder and just make sure that's properly pressed down. And then you can just check that that's going to meet, which it is. I mean, it should, but you just never know with these things. And then just grab a piercing tool to get rid of that. And then fold. And I tend to do it sort of from the middle rather than an end, because again, that gives you a bit more forgiveness. And there is our basic bag. Now, this is going to be the back this sort of either one of these probably this one because that's got the seam showing so this is the back so the first thing to do is to fold in our sides so I'm going to grab snail for speed and on one of these flaps just add some snail um, I would suggest that if you're going to put anything in here of any weight that you use uh, tear and tape and then just get it so that it's square of itself and I tend to pop the stuck bit slightly in because then you can bring up the, the one that you're marrying it to um, and you're going to be fairly confident that everything's square. And then just I've got my hand in the bag just to make sure that that's stuck nicely. And then just check where the back is. So this is the back. So this will go in next and then this. And again, I'm just going to pop some snail for speed down the two sides. I'm not going to worry about this because that's going to be covered up. And then just bring that up. And then on the last one, and again, I would use tear and tape if this was to be used for anything with any weight. And then just add adhesive to that and bring that up. So that is our basic bag. And again, nothing wrong with putting your arm in and your hand in and just pushing against it just to make everything sure everything is properly um, put together. So here's our back. So I'm going to come in at the sides and just squish the bag together. Can you see that? Yes, you can. So just squish those two together and I'm coming down mm, a 
about an inch and then these bits will should just fall into place um, like that then grab the wild stocks last get it while it's available one eighth inch circle punch just line those up better because they weren't there we go um, this will not be in the new annual catalogue because the manufacturers have said they will not be making it anymore so this will be going just saying um, so come in I don't know three quarters of an inch or so and about an inch down and punch because it's paper it will go through without too much difficulty and then same again on this side and just get them so that they're reasonably even I mean I just do it by eye probably come out a wee bit yep and there we go two lots of holes and again I have to ch keep checking where the back is this is the back so grab um, I used the mini ruffled in lemon lime twist for this one because there is lemon lime twist in here I could use the same again but I'm going to pick out the pool party so from the back the back um, I'm just going to feed this through and it will go and just feed a reasonable length through and then cut cut the uh, end so that it's about the same length roughly uh, we'll trim it at the end but and then again get the end and just poke that through if you have problems doing that then get your embossing tool which you use for so the this just push it through and it will go through without any problem it depends a lot on the ribbon as to whether it will go through easily or not and just get your ends so that they're basically even and pull then you've got that nice neat ribbon at the back and then at the front we can tie a bow now I always tie bows for these sort of things kind of upside down because I find that that way I the way I tie my bow I get the ends going down rather than up um, but it really does depend on exactly how you tie your bow so then just trim the end one two and that is our basic bag but we it's quite nice to have something on the front so I have chosen the today calls for something sweet stamp from the more than words and let's just bring that in so you can see it um, I've got that mounted up. I did the previous one in Call Me Clover. I'm going to do Melon Mambo on this one, which will stain my stamp, but that's fine. So it's only going to be stain. It's not going to be dirty. It's going to be clean dirt, not dirty dirt. Now, with your new stamps, do remember, if they're photopolymer, just to give them a key, just by rubbing the, um, rubbing the stamp, and that way you will get a nicely inked stamp and just stamp that on some whisper white and there we have a beautifully stamped image I am just going to clean my stamp to get that pink off as quickly as possible it has stained you can see it's stained but it, the clip qu quicker you clean the quicker you will get um, you will remove the ink and therefore the less staining you'll get and then with the new punch I love a label punch just punch that out and I'm also going to punch out two from Melon Mambo because I have actually got a little trick to do with those so that's that now I have done some stamping and die cutting before we started because I think there is nothing more dull than watching someone die cut so that's just annoying me um, so I am going to show you how I have done the stamping and I will die cut one of one more of the succulents so piece of whisper white and our sac succulent and then pool party just ink that up and stamp it and then close that up 
Uh, I have definitely, there we are. Grab your um, Melon Mambo again and a blender pen. And if you look at the, if you look at the um, succulents, you'll see that there's pink tips. So I'm going to replicate those with my Melon Mambo. So, blender pen, just make sure it's clean. I always check that these things are clean before I start and I clean them before I go away. I'll put them away and then just add little tips to your succulent and it makes a huge difference. Just the tiniest, tiniest little bit just brings the whole thing to life. I love these stamps, they're the distinctive stamps. They are gorgeous, um, but just a little bit extra just makes such a difference. Clean it off and then come back in just to sort of blend it out a bit. You won't get a huge difference. If you want to blend it out some more, what you can do is then grab your pool party, get some ink in the lid, even if it's only a little bit, and then just help blend that a wee bit. And it just gives a little bit more dimension to the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, little tip there. Now, what I did for the um, for the pine cones is I actually took my blender pen and just blended in so that you didn't get too much of a white background showing through. Um, so that's how I got this sort of filled in look. So that's that. Let me just die cut that out and then we can build everything up. don't need the stamp anymore. I keep my dies in the stamp set, so I need that die. I just put them on a little magnetic sheet. Um, so, magnetic base plate, and I need to turn that over. Here's a tip. If your base plate starts to bulge, so when you press it, it, um, it, you, it bounces, turn it over and that will help flatten it out again. Uh, I can't remember where I heard that. It was a YouTube video somewhere, um, but it's a great little tip and I, I'm keeping my base plates a lot flatter as a result. It seems slightly counterintuitive. Whoops, I've just moved my, moved my die. Uh, it seems slightly counterintuitive that you turn it over when it's, um, when it's lumpy in the middle because you'd think that you wanted to squish it flat, but no, other way around. Uh, you, if it's lumpy in the middle, you want to um, you want to have it the other way up, so it's concave when you put it on the uh, stamp set, on the plate. Oh, base plate, that's the word I'm looking for. Right, okay, I'm going to sneeze, I think. So I'll blow my nose instead. Apologies for that. I think it's hay fever. Um, we've got the most amazing weather in the UK at the moment, and it is gorgeous, but it is bringing things out out of season, uh, which is not terribly clever. Now, this one, I apologise for this one. I didn't do it quite the same way, but we'll, we'll use that as a background. So I'm going to... I touch... I tried to do the rock and roll technique, so you ink it up and then touch it on another... Um, on another stamp set. Not terribly successful. So we're going to pop that behind somewhere. If indeed we use it, we may not use it at all. Uh, so I'm just going to build up. Now the key to this is to not go too far either side of the um, of the stamp of the punched piece because this is just very slightly narrower than your bag, and you don't want everything sticking out too much. Um, it's all right to have it sticking out a wee bit, but let's not go mad. So, yeah, you see, I don't know that we need... I don't know that we need this one. So I think we'll just add these. One. And two, you can see I did some stamping and decided it didn't work, so I used my card again, because why wouldn't you? 
and then this one will pop down here. And I know this seems weird doing it from the back, but I do find that it is the easiest way of doing it. I'm just using liquid adhesive. And I'm not going to put that last leaf on just yet. So there is our piece. Let's bring the bag back in. And you see that's going to fit quite nicely uh, with only a little bit sticking out over the edge. So the next thing to do is to get some dimensionals. And I do tend to use the dimensionals to help stick body and soul together a bit, um, as well as actually use as dimension. So I kind of try to go where there's a, an overlap. And we probably need a mini for there. Or you could use an off cut. But we'll just pop one there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the the Melon Mambo punched piece is just coming out from behind um, and that's where I'm then going to trap um, one of the leaves. In fact I might not trap it, I might just stick it to the back of that. So let's pop another dimensional there, remove the backings. And basically you're going to remove the backings for one of the uh, Melon Mambo pieces and then you're going to glue the other one onto it. So, in the air a wee bit, just pop that so that you've got just a bit sticking out around the edge. There we go. And then this one we can add with some glue. And we're coming down this time. There we go. So that's that. Then I'm going to stick this so that we get some dimension. I'm going to stick this onto the dimensional behind. So that is going on here. And then we can add another dimensional either side. We'll pop one there as well. Whoops. And some adhesive remove the backings and then we will be done which is probably just as well as we are 22 and a half minutes in so whilst i'm finishing this off let's just do a few public service announcements uh do remember that we still have the best part of a month of celebration so for every 45 pounds you spend in my online store you get to choose a level one item if you spend 90 pounds you can either have two level one or one level two. Um, the choice is yours. We've got celebration coordination going on, which means you get to have things like the dies um, from this are celebration coordination. Um, so you pay for those, but you can add them towards your celebration item qualifying order. Um, so really great way to get a full set of what you want. So you could get the dies and the punch and something else, and that would get you a level one uh, item. What else was I going to say? No, that's about it. So we've got celebration coordination. It's third release celebration. Second release celebration. We've still got items from first release celebration. The key for me is to use my uh, host code, which is in the description bar below. If you use that, if your order is under £150, you get to share in the host rewards, which is another way of me giving back to you. If you shop with me, you will always get a thank you card, a thank you gift, S uh, stamping rewards if you use the host code. Um, so yes, and if you use the host code, you also get sunflower rewards for every £30 you spend in any one order, when you get 10 of those, you get to exchange them for £30 of product, which is just great. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, I will have close-ups of the stamping and everything and all the dimensions on my website, which is linked below. If you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would be delighted if you would. The sub there's a subscription button in the bottom right hand corner, assuming it's still there, um, otherwise there is just the standard subscribe button. 
Uh, if you would like to receive my newsletter, you can subscribe to that over on my website and then you get to see all the new stuff as it comes out. Thank you very much indeed. I hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot for watching.